So I'm just going to talk about some things I want to talk about for a few minutes and we'll see. If you got any questions, if there's anybody there, let me know. Uh, if you can hear this, let me know. So, uh, but I would like to do more of the lives because it can be very valuable. So it is uh, the 3rd of July and zone 5B, 6A. And right about now, I last week I pulled up all the peas. Okay, the heat is here. I mean, it's been here for a while. And this year has been a very bad year for peas. So don't stress out if they're all just, oh, they're not really growing or, oh, what's wrong with my peas and try to fertilize them or something. That's not what it is. It's the heat. Okay. Peas do not like the heat. And so they'll turn yellow and they just won't produce very well. And so you want to uh, just go ahead and cut them at the ground level. All your peas right now, if they're underperforming, cut them at the ground level. Don't pull the roots out of peas, but uh, because we have to refresh. We either have to prepare uh, the garden for next uh, for the next planting of peas, which we will do August 1st, or you can go ahead and put something in there like a uh, cucumber. Cucumbers would do really well following peas in your garden right now. So if you just cut, uh, cut it down at ground level, leave the roots in there because the pea roots have the nodules of rhizobial bacteria that add nitrogen to the soil. Things grow really well after um, peas have been there, okay? Uh, Erunamuk. Hello. So it is working. Okay, good. This is my first ever live. Uh, so you want to um, plant something that requires a lot of fertility after peas. Uh, or you could just leave it kind of vacant until about another three weeks. We're going to be planting the fall peas. And when you plant fall peas, remember, you want to use dwarf varieties. Okay, the big tall ones that get real six feet tall, those are only for spring planting. Okay, so when we plant around the last week of July or first week of August, the peas, we're going to plant dwarf varieties only. Look for the ones on the label that say earliest, the earliest, like early number nine or early progress number nine. Any of those early peas is what you're going to want uh, to be planting about the last week of July, the first of August. Now, uh, another thing. Bush beans, you still have plenty of time for bush beans. So go ahead, soak the seeds overnight. And I'm talking stringless green beans. You can soak the seeds overnight and then uh, put them right into the ground and they sprout in like five to 10 days and you will have bush, you will have a bush of green beans within like 50 days. Okay, and those also add really good fertility to the soil. So thinking ahead, go ahead and plant bush green beans right now in an area where once you harvest the bush green beans, come uh, about Thanksgiving time, we're gonna be planting garlic in there. So plant the bush green beans in the area now and you'll get uh, you know plenty of bush green beans. I'll show you guys how to can them and stuff. Uh, but then after you, you, you cut those at ground level, once they're all said and done, then uh, the rhizobial bacteria from the roots of the, pea, of the uh, beans will help our garlic. So you see how we're rotating it like that. Trish Worthington, good morning, afternoon. Yes, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Uh, I'm just trying to tell everybody uh, the garden planning, okay? Because it's very important right now. Uh, right now is like the marathon of the middle. People kind of get like, oh, my, some, my spring stuff's not doing that well, and what do I do for fall? Most, a lot of people are unaware that they can have a fall garden, a whole new run of stuff, okay? Hey, you're very welcome, Carlicia. That's a pretty name. Uh, yes, you're very welcome. And I, I'm germinating beans this year. It's been so hot and dry. I know that it's been really hot and dry uh, without irrigation. I, I mean, this is never in my life living in northern Indiana, even though I was gone traveling for 10 years. Um, still, th this is just crazy. OK, but do not despair because we can still um, we still have plenty of time. So if you're in zones even four, five, six and seven, OK, the other zones are kind of much different. But if you're in any of these zones, now's the time to be planting the fall garden. So. Uh, Go ahead, pull up the peas, like I said, and get ready for another round of peas. But then also you can um, plant the beans where your garlic is going to go. Um, quick question. Oop, oop, oop. Uh, yeah, I, it comes up and then it goes. I don't know what that question just was. I got to learn how to do the live thing. Okay, but <laughs> thanks for uh, sticking with me. Uh, another thing right now, plant your uh, cabbages, plant the brassicas. I don't know how to get back to that question. I, I have to figure it out. Um, plant your brassicas right now. 
So right about now, the beginning of July, you want to have them plant them in decent sized containers. So the cabbages for the fall and they like to uh, ripen in the cold weather. So plant those right now so that in about another three to four weeks, we're going to be planting actual plants, you know, transplants into the garden, preferably in a place where beans or peas were growing because things grow really well after beans and peas. Remember this. Um, so get those going. And another thing that we're going to be planting in the fall garden is daikon radish. A lot of you might not be familiar with that, but uh, come about the 1st of August or the middle of August, we're going to be planting the big, long tuber type um, daikon radish. And those are really, really beneficial. I'm going to get back to that question. How, how do I do it? Yeah. Put up your question again so he can see it. Yes, do that. Hello, friend. We are in zone 9A getting ready to start sweet potatoes and yams. Whoa. Any suggestions for companion plants with sweet potatoes and yams? I wish it stayed on the screen longer. Um, I have a small paper bag of kidney beans I saved from two years. I popped a few of them. Yes, yes, they are going. Okay. Um, the, let me keep it straight. The sweet potatoes. If you are doing the sweet potatoes, uh, the things that I plant with sweet potatoes are the coxcomb plants and marigolds and nasturtiums because they're vines as well. So the sweet potatoes get totally crazy. I mean, they get a sweet potato vine will get 20 feet long, no problem. And everywhere that it touches the ground, it will uh, try to put down roots and then form a new potato. But you don't want to, in zone nine, like you are, maybe you can do it like this, but here the season is not nearly long enough. So if you're growing sweet potatoes and the vine goes out and touches the earth, it will put down roots and try to grow another potato. But we don't want that in the short seasons because you're, you will end up with the plant wasting so much of its energy trying to um, trying to make all these little potatoes and the season's not long enough. So if you're in zones four, five, six, or seven and you're doing sweet potatoes, keep the vines no more than like five feet. Cut them off at about five feet. All right, and that is gonna put a lot more uh, stuff, a lot more energy. Trash by two months, no sprouts are coming up after two months. Okay, then you need to, then they, they rotted in the, uh, in the bag. Someone said they're doing the potato uh, bag method then they rot it in the back. So you, you definitely get you a fast growing one like the uh, Pontiac Red or even the Yukon Gold, but look for, look for the fast growing thing. Uh, you're welcome, Michelle. And look for the fast growing thing and replant the potatoes. I just planted some Yukon Golds the other day. Now you will get something, they might not, I mean, depending on the weather, you might not get a full harvest, but that doesn't matter. It's, I mean, you will get food, you'll get sustenance. So replant the ones, if it's been two months, Wait, you should, it should be two weeks, no longer. So they rotted in the bag, something was wrong. It just start over. It happens sometimes, it even happens to me. Uh, so one of the conditions, maybe an animal or they, the compost was too hot. Uh, do I ever cut back all the greenery? About the potato bags, no. Um, well, lots of, Trish did the tobato, uh, potato bag method and lots of flower buds, nice, that's wonderful. Right now, make sure they get plenty of water when they are uh, flowering because when you see the flowers is when they just start initiating tuber production. So when you see the flowers, water them you know, as, much as, as much as you can, really, if they got good drainage, but at least every couple days if you're not getting any rainfall because now is when they're gonna you know, really start to suck up the uh, nutrients. And someone asked about the vines. No, you never cut them back. Okay, you don't, um, you don't prune the potatoes. They're actually kind of like vines, so they'll grow up and stuff, but then they get to a point where they flop over and everyone thinks that's a problem, but it's not a problem. That's just what they do. Uh, and it even helps to shade out the bags because the bags can get really hot. So just let them go like that and you'll see th that their health will start to decline. You'll see that the, the potato vines will start to turn a little bit light green and then they'll start to get spots on them. Uh, so long as you know, it's been a couple of months. I mean, if it's right away, then it's a problem. But as they get to the end of their life cycle, they're going to start looking kind of scraggly. They're going to fall over and you're going to be like, eh, maybe I need to fertilize them. Go ahead, some fish emulsion and stuff like that, or some of the J-Dom fertilizer. Uh, but do not despair and don't be concerned because um, that just means that they are coming towards the end of their life cycle. So once you see the potato vines start to die, uh, keep an eye to make sure that none of the potatoes are popped up above the surface that there's not uh, you know that so look in there and make sure that there's no tuber sticking out because if they reach the sunlight then they're ruined okay so go ahead and cover them with more leaf mold or newspaper or whatever it is 
Uh, when do you know when to harvest the potatoes? That's what I'm getting to right now. Exactly, Trish. So uh, when to harvest the potatoes is you'll see them start to get scraggly. They'll fall over. They'll start to look a little bit lime green and they'll have spots on them and stuff. Uh, and let them die. Let the vines completely die. That's the thing about potatoes. You have to let the vine fall over and just die. I mean, but continue to give it some water. But once it looks totally pretty much dead, um, then then just stop watering it. And you wait about two solid weeks until after the vines have died for to dig up your tubers. Because if you dig them up straight away, if, if you pull them up right now, if they've already, you know, then and they've been growing for a while, you pull them up, you'll get, there'll be a bunch of potatoes, you know, small ones and stuff, but the skin on them will be really, really delicate and really, really thin. So, and therefore they won't store as long. Because if you ding the skin of the potato, that's going to be a problem. It's not going to store as long. So you want to wait until the vines die and then wait an additional two weeks after that. And that's going to make the potatoes real thick skin. That's going to make the, the skin on the potatoes become really thick. Uh, and that's what you want. And when you harvest the potatoes, don't wash them. You just leave the soil on them. Okay. If you wash them, that's going to decrease the amount of storage time. So do not let them get dinged up. Okay. So wait two weeks until after they are, uh, the vines died, dig them up, uh, very carefully. Don't ding them up and do not wash them. And then immediately, uh, put them into a place where they're going to get a lot of airflow. All right. And just let them out of direct sunlight and just let them sort of dry. Okay, because we want them, we want that skin to cure, because it's that skin that cures that's going to allow them to store over the winter time. Uh, and then I will show you guys the method for storing them and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, if I missed your question, then put it back on the screen so I can see it again. Um, other than that, uh, we're getting things ready for the fall garden. You still got plenty of time for bush green beans, pole beans. If you live in zone seven, you can still do it. Um, but pole beans has been last call. So, cause they have to set up too much infrastructure. All right. So go ahead and plant bush green beans. Uh, and then I'll show you guys how to can those and stuff like that and get the, um, brassicas started. Yes. Not Brussels sprouts. You don't have time for that. If you live in this one, hello, cinnamon. Hello to you too. Uh, and Let's see, what else do you want to, let's see, can you guys see the garden? Yeah, let me show you. This is where it, uh, can you see the garden behind me? Yeah, man, so much stuff is growing right now. I mean, it's growing crazy. Uh, you see, I got the tub of the sweet potatoes over there. That's uh, what's in my cold training tub. The sweet potato vines are just growing out there and uh, I keep them pruned, a bunch of peppers and uh, the onions, man, I've been pulling up a lot of onions and, oh, let me show you my, uh, let me show you my garlic harvest. Okay. Uh, guys, a lot of people have been asking me about these vines. If you want to, uh, if you want me to do a little tutorial on that, I could show you it's, uh, it's not tough. And once you know what the plants want, then it's pretty easy, but check this out. The garlic. Man, all this garlic off of a, I got 212 cloves from a five by 10 uh, area. And you see, look at this elephant garlic, huge. And I have a really big head and it's even that big. So uh, guys, we plant this about Thanksgiving and the key to a good garlic harvest is the appropriate soil beforehand. So if you want to plant garlic and get really good, big flavorful uh, bulbs, plant green beans in the area now so that when after we harvest the green beans like I've been saying then we will um, plant the garlic yeah but you want to when you harvest your garlic you want to make sure that you leave the whole plant because over the next two weeks the garlic uh, will draw the energy up from the plant and use it to solidify the bulb the skin around the bulbs and that will make it store all winter long okay so don't cut them off contrary to what a lot of people do i've done it all different ways this is the way to do it oh wait wait what was the question oh i couldn't see them i gotta figure out how to get these questions from disappearing so fast um let's see here hmm okay welcome to live chat yeah sorry man i missed your question but uh, i'll figure out how to do this so yeah let them uh, dry like that. Don't cut them off. 
and uh, then you can store them. So, uh, Trish Worthington, how do you prepare beans for food storage after you harvest them? Uh, well, if they're green beans, then um, if they're green beans, then you just can them, of course, because green beans don't last all that long. But if you want to um, do the dry beans, then you must wait until they are dry. So you wait until they're dried on the vine. So nature, that's why they're just one of the most incredible survival foods, or just foods in general. And that's why all indigenous peoples have grown uh, a variety of beans is because for drying, is because they, they create their own drying rack. I mean, they grow up, um, and I've got some right now in the back that are already, you know, eight, nine feet tall. And then they'll set beans, and some of them you can eat as snap beans over the summertime, as green beans, which is great. But then you let them all dry, and you wait till the whole plant is dead, sometime in October or November, till it's way dead. Um, leather britches, yes, yes, very true. You can do it that way as well, by letting them dry. Um, but for people like me that grow dry beans, there's not, there's no need for that. Um, but yes, leather britches works well. It's kind of a strange name, but um, so you just let them dry, and then you can now here. If you don't have a machine to help you with the harvesting, so the beans dry completely, and then you pick them off and you put them once they're rattling dry. They have to be rattling dry. They can't just be kind of dry. So make sure that they're bone dry and they snap like that, <laughs> and then snap them off and put them into a large pillowcase and then take the pillowcase i mean you can put a whole you know half pillowcase full twist it shut and start bam, smash it on the ground like that you smash it step on it you know um just really break up the stuff inside and then tilt tilt it upside down so that the the uh the the opening is right here and you got your hand on it and shake it real good Shake it to, so that all the beans will fall to the to sort of the entrance area, and then just slowly let go, and you'll just see beans just ting 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 ting. All the beans will fall out. I mean, it really helps speed it along, as opposed to sitting there snapping every bean, snapping every bean, snapping every bean. You can also do it if you have like I seen the villagers doing this when I was traveling and stuff. In a lot of the countries, they would harvest beans or whatever it might be, lentils or legumes, uh, harvest the beans, lay them out on a tarp or a bed sheet, uh, and then fold the sheet in half and stomp all over it like that, stomp all over the beans. And then with two people, one person on each end of the sheet going like this, sifting in the wind and stuff, and all the beans fall to the center. And then you can just kind of clear away the debris and get your beans out. So there's all different kinds of ways uh, the main thing is just find out, you know, based upon your, um, your scale, you know. So, uh, is gardening in Arizona? <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, yes, yes, that's a good tip. Uh, I've also been growing tomatoes in five gallon bucket, the one planted. Ah, uh, okay, I promise next time. How long do Tahitian melon squash take to mature? 110 days. Uh, just ordered seeds last night. I have until November 12th. Well, if you've got like 100 days at least, I mean, preferably 110 days, but 100 days will work. You, you'll, you'll be fine. If you get them and you got till November 12th, get them planted though. Make sure that they got lots, that they can make that grow, that infrastructure. So plant, if you're, if you're trying to, to get a rapid growth out of it, make sure there's a lot of nitrogen-based stuff. The fish emulsion, the video I made, or the compost or whatever it is, then uh, go ahead and add lots of that. All right, soak the seed for six hours beforehand, plant it into that, and really hit it with the fish emulsion fertilizer, uh, foliar it so that it ha makes rapid growth. So it doesn't just sit there for two weeks, you know, like this, because you don't got time to waste. But the Tahitian melon squash, man, oh, delicious. Can you store the dried beans using the log food storage method you made? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you treat them like any other beans. Once you're positive that they're dry, you know, and, and you've let them hang until they're rattling dry, uh, then yes, you can. You can store them in the mylar, the five gallon mylar, or even the one gallon mylar, or the one quart mylar, whatever it is, just make sure you put the oxygen absorber in there, okay? And I didn't say this in the video, because I, I like to keep those like brief, of course, but you can also store seeds this way. If you get the small ones, the, the one quart, you know, or smaller, 
uh, you can put an oxygen absorber in there and store like bean seeds for planting or corn seeds for like a, you know, if you buy those like the, the arc, the seed arc, like 25 year storage of, of garden seeds for, you know, if it hits the fan, all that is, is uh, the same exact thing. Uh, pick the 47 winter squash. Damn, nice. Yeah, you're going to be eating those for a while. Um, 47 winter squash already. Uh, all those are is um, mylar bags with oxygen absorber in them. So, so you can do that yourself with, uh, um, yeah, you've been worried about seed storage. Yeah, and it's a legitimate concern because a lot of people will just have seeds and, and they don't treat them right and then they go to plant them. And I don't know why I, none of them germinated or I don't know why. It's because they weren't stored right. Most, if you store seeds in the mylar bags with the oxygen absorber, they will last like indefinitely. I mean, many, many years. So go ahead and stock up on some seeds like um, uh, green bean seeds for planting, pole bean seeds, all of that kind of stuff and store it in there. Just tuck it away just in case. And you don't touch the stuff that you store away. Then you just act after you put it in the mylar, you act as if you don't have it. And that's just there just in case. But you go ahead and buy other stuff. Hello, Linda. Nice to see you. I love your channel. Let's talk prepping. Everyone should check it out. Uh, very informative. The, uh, so you don't touch that stuff and then you just act like you don't have any of those seeds and you um, buy new ones like each year. So just pretend like you don't have those. Uh, this is very helpful on seed storage. Thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. Uh, now, it, also, if you're just going to store seeds for the next year, um, the refrigerator or the freezer is a good way. I use a food saver to save them. Will that work for seeds too if you keep them in a dark place after? Yes. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Um, you can also put a, uh, it just, they won't last as long as the mylar because the mylar doesn't transmit anything. This, the food saver bags actually are over the long term a little bit permeable and they're definitely light can come through. Uh, but yes, you can store them. When planting, I always pop three seeds in a hole. Do you always cut back to two? I know it's tough. It's tough. When you're planting, you put three in a hole. I know I'm not good at thinning, but I learned over the years, you have to for the good of the plant and the good of the produce. Because if you don't, then you will end up with a bunch of stunted stuff. And to have three big Tahitian melon squash in one mound, that's a tremendous amount of life energy that is, it's attempting to pull out of the soil. So it's better to have uh, one Tahitian melon squash, a few stalks of dry corn, and a couple of uh, pull bean seeds, the three sisters method. It's beautiful what it does. But if you can't do that, then yeah, um, well, pretty much for everything, plant two or three and then um, thin to the strongest one. That's, that's what I do, especially if you're saving seeds yourself. Seeds are getting very expensive. Absolutely. Fuel surcharges now, 10 seeds a minute for four to five dollars. You're exactly right, Cinnamon. You're exactly right. And this is why we have to be doing these things now. And, and it's also a great thing. Um, can I overwater my bag potato? I have good drainage. Can I overwater my bag potatoes? Not really. No. No, they love uh, water. If you have good drainage in the soil, you cannot overwater the potatoes. I mean, don't go, you know, ape shit with it, just crazy dumping it on there all the time. But if you water, if you give them a little drink every day, they'll do fine. They'll do really good. Um, that's the beauty of having the raised bag like that. Uh, oh, what was I talking about? Oh, I forgot what I was talking about too. Now, so, yes, you're welcome. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Is there anything else? All right, guys. Well, I'll probably try. I'll do a few more minutes. I'll do maybe like a 25 minute one. But this live thing seems pretty cool. Maybe I'll uh, I'll try and do one uh, more often so you can like build up questions and then you can. Uh, oh, yeah. Expensive seeds. That's right. Thank you, Trish. Uh, expensive seeds. And that is why it is very good to be storing our own because uh, what could be more valuable in a, in a serious and, and I'm not saying it's it's going to happen or anything, but what if it was a situation where there was extreme limitations on food. What could be more valuable to give to someone, uh, either as gift or barter, than the ability, than seeds? I mean, to grow your own. And, and so I think it's very important. Uh, be sure to hit the like button. That's right. I can't believe I didn't say that. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you have leaf foot bugs? And if so, how to kill them? I'm not sure what that is. Do you have seed stores that you recommend? I've been buying from Fedco. Uh, all of my seeds, I mean, now I save most of them and I get them from other people. 
Uh, when are you making a fermented pickle? Uh, soon, yeah. Well, mine are a ways away because I just planted them after my peas. So the fermented cu pick, uh, cucumber thing will be uh, later. Um, yes, yeah, Richmond, I'm in Fort Wayne. Uh, you are lucky you don't know what they are. Uh, what was the question? Okay, what was the question I was just supposed to answer? Uh, type it again. I was just getting ready to, but then all these other questions came up. Uh, so... Yeah, it's so weird not being able to. Cast. Uh, no, I'll call her back. She'll understand. So uh, expensive seeds. Yes, we covered that. You want to have as many expensive uh, where to buy seeds. That's right. OK, um, I get all of my seeds. Well, I save them now and I also barter with people for them. But Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, I've always had really good results with them. Always. Uh, and their genetics are really nice. Now, for things like bulk seeds, when you'll see me in the fall, I'll show you guys how to plant cover crops. Because I got this big garden, but also three more big gardens. I mean, big ones um, that you, you don't see as much. I don't show them as much. Uh, but for cover crop seeds and microgreen seeds and wheatgrass seeds, I get five gallon buckets of them from True Leaf Market. And I've been putting a link in the description because I signed up for the thing where they give you a little kickback if, if, you, uh, if the people use the link, even though it doesn't cost you any more. So I was like, well, yeah, that would help. So I put a link in the description now to the True, uh, to the, uh, True Leaf Market seeds. And if you go there, and that's where I personally get them. So for all those kind of seeds in bulk, uh, True Leaf Market. Yeah, but the other seeds, the specialty seeds, Baker Creek. Yeah, exactly. Carlicia. Carlicia. Am I saying that right? Carlicia or Carlicia? Uh, True Leaf Market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the good ones for bulk. Baker Creek are the good ones for uh, everything else. But also uh, the old timers in the area, if they've got something, Carlisa. Carlisa, right? Um, they, they, I bought a bunch of seeds for air from Haas Tools. They ship same day. Yeah, Haas Tools is cool. I've never used them. Uh, I've watched some of their... Vi um, you've had mixed results with Baker Creek, huh? Yeah, it depends on so many factors. I mean, it depends on a lot of factors, you know. So, um, fermented pickle video soon. That's right. I will be making the fermented pickle soon. So, the things that you need for that, though, are going to be the garlic. So, we just harvested the garlic. I just showed you. Um, bay leaves. Um... Um, peppercorns and of course the pickles uh, so and we don't use any vinegar or anything like that so I will uh, be showing you guys but I'm still at least three weeks away from getting any pickling cucumber harvest because I like to have those after the um, after the the peas so I just removed the peas about a week ago and then put in the transplants of the the pickling cucumbers that's important and they just man after peas and beans things grow so good they just <laughs> Just explode with seeds. Big batch of, of fish emulsion. Good. Charlie Cut says, just started a big batch of fish emulsion. Really good. Leave it in the blazing sun, my friend. A lot of people ask me about, are you sure I should leave it in the blazing sun? Yes, because there's a direct correlation between the rapidity of decomposition and the reproductive capabilities of the microbes and heat. So the hotter it is, the faster everything decomposes and works. The colder it is, the slower everything works. So here, when it's cold during the winter time, just forget about it. It does like nothing. Um, my animals eat fish fertilizer. Do you mean you feed it to them or putting weeds in compost pile? Uh, yes, I put weeds in the compost pile so long as they haven't gone to seed yet. If they have gone to seed yet, then I put them into the J-Dom liquid fertilizer. So uh, because nothing, that, that takes care of it all. There's, if you put the seeds in there, seeds can survive anything. Then you got seed, weed seeds all over the place. Um, yes, the fish emulsion. If you're talking about pests getting into there, then uh, you need to, well, then you're, you're using too high a concentration. Because at one ounce a gallon, it should be totally fine. You, you should not have, um, oh, you live in Florida. Uh, perfectly hot. No, they steal the bottle if they can. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinnamon's talking about they steal the actual bottle. Yeah, everything likes likes fish. The fish is actually one of the most beautiful things to use for fertilizers. And I used to live in Northern California. This is where I really developed my passion for growing and, and all the understanding from all the old schools that were there. I was just constantly day and night asking questions and learning. But there is um, there's like Yurok Indians there, the, the tribe. 
and they were telling me that the reason or one big reason that the redwoods and if you've ever seen a redwood oh my god uh they were telling me one reason the redwoods and everything grows so incredibly well there is because of the salmon runs the salmon runs and there's millions and millions of dead fish after the salmon run and they decompose and the fungal networks draw the fish proteins miles and miles dozens or even hundreds of miles inland or upland uh, and feed the roots i mean it's just a beautiful thing so hot here in alabama too very oh god yeah i spent uh, a summer in uh, new orleans and never again i just don't i can't even understand um uh, carlisa yes you uh, understand how fascinating that is and when people were telling me that about the fish and all of that I, oh i was just soaking it all up just thinking wow and, and it's true when you see it and you look at it and it's just beautiful so okay my friends um if there's any more urgent questions go ahead and post it real quick but other than that um i will let it go because i'm about to hop on the harley and ride up to the lake uh with my brother and his girlfriend i came in sweating like crazy when i caught the live stream oh good <laughs> oh i bet yeah oh so hot man yeah i prefer a dry heat you know um anyways uh yeah have questions in mind maybe i'll try and do one every saturday even though i think today's sunday i'll do one on saturdays maybe so all right thank you this was fun yes i enjoyed it too thank you for the live stream thank you guys man i wasn't sure about this i was like ah do i do a live stream who's gonna be there and but thankfully i caught you guys got to answer some good questions uh, look forward to the next live stream. Yes, stay safe. Likewise, thank you very much, my friends. Um, don't forget to like the video. You know, helps the channel grow, and you know I love to grow things. So, okay, see you next time. How do I end it now? Okay.